The spin continues from Dan Goldman, again, spinner in chief. He's just downright dishonest. I'm sorry, but he is. That that last soundbite shows it, but here he is, and now what's become in the past 18 hours an infamous soundbite. It's sandwiched in the middle of a bunch of nonsense, but where he tries to say, they would talk about the weather. Listen, it's not 20. <laughs> he did describe that there were a, a, approximately 20 occasions over the course of their uh, nearly decade-long business relationship that Hunter Biden would uh, ask his father to say hello to whomever he was at dinner. He said there were sometimes when it was friends and sometimes when it was a potential business partner. But the witness was unequivocal and stated very clearly that they never discussed any business on that phone conversations. There were niceties, and there was a hello, and there we talked about the weather. If he says hello to someone that he sees his son with, well, is he supposed to say, hi, son? Oh, no, I'm not going to say hello to the other people at the table or the other people on the phone. The witness was very, very consistent that none of those conversations ever had to do with any business dealings or transactions. They were purely what he called casual conversation. Peter, Molly Hemingway <laughs> writes in a piece in The Federalist today, while no one actually thinks Joe Biden has a secret interest in meteorology that he only shares with corrupt foreign oligarchs who happen to be in business <laughs> with his son, the claim is ridiculous <laughs> for another reason, which is, and she's giving credit to Larry O'Connor here, quote, understand this, Hunter getting Joe on speakerphone was the deliverable. Exactly right. Yeah, I, when, I, when I first heard him, Dan uh, Goldman, say this, I thought, you know, there are these things called weather apps. You don't need to call your dad to discuss <laughs> the weather. I mean, you have weather apps. This information is not hard to get. But, but more to the point, um, look, in all of these dealings, the question I would ask Hunter Biden and I would ask Joe Biden is, what was your son's business? What services did he provide, tangible services did he provide, and or what product did he provide for these tens of millions of dollars that flowed to him from China and Ukraine? Because he had no skill set, and we know the answer. The product was Joe Biden. Mm -hmm. uh, and again, I mean, Dan Goldman knows this. It's the way fundraising is done in Washington, D.C. You know, a lobbyist comes into the office. He's concerned about the bill. The senator or congressman talks with them about the bill. He doesn't ask them for a donation. He doesn't ask them to hold a fundraiser. That happens after the fact. A subordinate calls them. That's where the financial transaction takes place. It's the same thing here. These foreign entities were investing in the Biden family. In fact, Chairman Yi, who was the head of the CEFC, when he sent $6 million to Hunter Biden, he said, this is not just for you. This is for all the Bidens. So they all knew who they were in business with. They were in business with the Biden family. And I think as this investigation proceeds, Megan, we're going to actually see more evidence that Joe Biden actually benefited personally from his son's financially from his son's overseas business dealings. Um, you're right. The, the, the What business were you in? What business were you in? That's a great question because it's very clearly the access business. I'm, my last name is Biden and so is my dad's and he's the sitting vice president. From the laptop, um, again, this is from the New York Post. There was an email uh, September 22nd, 2011, where Hunter told Devin Archer that a Chinese mogul who secured them a multi-million dollar deal, deal, quote, loved him for his last name. Um, a, a Chinese businessman, uh, Che Fang, who was referred to as the super chairman by this pair, Devin and Hunter, uh, helped Biden's firm, Rosemont, uh, and another one. And uh, then Hunter emailed Archer, I don't believe in lottery tickets anymore, but I do believe in the super chairman. When Archer questioned why Fang was so generous to Hunter, Hunter speculated that his favorable position had everything to do with his hyper-connected father. And to your point about what actual services could he provide? He wasn't an energy expert. This is a lie. There's no reason for Burisma to have him on the board. Something happened in court last week that Margot Cleveland of The Federalist was pointing out. 
I don't have it totally understood in my head, so forgive me, I'm going to try to go but from memory. But she was pointing out that the judge was saying to Hunter, in this plea deal, you're, you're saying in the statement of facts that you provided legal services to this one Chinese mogul, and that's why you got this million-dollar payment? And Hunter said, uh, yes, uh, if, if memory serves, but I'm not 100%. And she's pointing out it was a clear lie. He got this million-dollar check for the same reason he was on the Burisma board. They tried to paper it by making it look like they were paying him for legal services. But this is a pattern, Peter. It's a pattern. And now you've got, to your point about the media, the spin, the spin, 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 to try to, like, pretend that yesterday was an insignificant day and that all this stuff that went down with Joe Biden on the phone 20 times, who the hell's getting on the phone with Romania? <laughs> the Romanian yeah. businessmen when you're the vice president. Um, that it, it all had to do with the tumult that was caused by the death of Bo Biden. It's the most cynical, disgusting spin. Some of that is in the soundbite I'm about to play you from this morning over on MSNBC SOT 14. As far as Hunter Biden goes, even those close to the Biden family suggest that some of his behavior is pretty unseemly. That doesn't make it illegal. Yeah, maybe he is guilty of turning a blind eye to some of his son's uh, behavior. And we should put this in context. This is a time when Bo Biden, the president's other son, was ill and then dying. We hear here from Comer and other Republicans, it's wishful thinking. They're trying to create yeah. a scandal. They're trying to create a scandal or at least the appearance of a scandal, the, the sort of, uh, you know, smokiness of a yeah. scandal. You know, I think it's pretty clear, at least so far, there is nothing there. This was a, a, a sort of very fraught and and sad time for the Biden family. And uh, we know how important family is uh, to the president. Let's put this in context. Oh, my God. Bo Biden got very sick in early oh, 2015. Dan. At that point, Joe Biden and Hunter Biden began to speak every day because they were both devastated. But the critical part here for Congress, and that's what we have to make sure we understand, is that Joe Biden was doing nothing to benefit his son. And what about the Biden bribery bribery tapes we've heard about? The witness completely debunked those allegations. And he said there was no bribe of either Hunter or Joe. Look at that lie at the end, Peter. That lie at the end. I was yeah. laughing too until that. He said there was no bribe. That's a lie. That's not that's not yeah. even what Dan Goldman said happened yesterday. He upped his rhetoric for morning Joe. That's not even arguably what even Dan Goldman said the witness said. The witness said yesterday, according to Dan Goldman, not that he was aware of. Um, but to, he states it definitively there on MSNBC to their audience. And how about the nonsense about they were just too upset about Bo to realize what, that they were breaking laws? Do you guys remember when I had RFK Jr. on my show and he discussed his presidential campaign and his book, The Real Anthony Fauci? I remember. And I got to say, a lot of the things RFK is trying to expose are downright frightening. I'm not saying he's right on this or wrong on that, but what I am saying is, you should be aware of this and what RFK Jr. has written about, what he's been alleging. And now you can do it very easily. You can watch the movie adaptation of his book for free. That's right. The folks over at Revealed Films have turned the real Anthony Fauci book into a movie. See Fauci's questionable behavior, to put it mildly, and motives during the AIDS crisis for yourself. Learn as they dive into his $2 billion plus Department of Defense funding, and the damages related to his collaboration with Bill Gates. And don't forget how he shunned all sorts of inexpensive solutions to COVID. This guy now being threatened with criminal charges by Rand Paul. Mm -hmm. Go watch the movie and make up your own mind for yourself. For a limited time only, watch this movie for free at therealanthonyfaucimovie.com. Therealanthonyfaucimovie.com. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.